Hey y'all, it's Erin from Go Air and Go, and I'm answering some students' questions from Southwestern Illinois College, and um, they have read my book, Adventure Philanthropist, Great Adventures Volunteering Abroad, as part of their school curriculum, and so hey, Bellevue, Illinois, happy to come back for the second part of the questions. So I thought I would answer a couple questions now that have to do kind of about what I learned from the trip. Um, one of the questions came about, but about sort of how have my political views shifted as a result of the experiences I had on my two-year journey. And I have to say, um, my eyes have been opened a little bit. I mean, um, I study a lot of political science. I have three degrees in political science, so I love studying political philosophy and civic society and political movements and things like that. But you never really know what's going on in a community and what drives a community unless you're there. I mean. Um, I guess what I learned most is, of course, question the media, which we should do anyway, but really start to, to dig down and, and get personal impressions of what's going on. Um, you see things about what was going on for me, especially then um, the Arab Spring had just happened, and I had been to Egypt, let's say, before the Arab Spring and had a totally different experience than I had after, um, a year after, or less than a year after the Arab Spring happened and Cairo was really erupting and, and all of that. And so... Um, I guess politically what I learned is to constantly question, right? What are we being told? What's really happening? Why are people motivated to riot or go to war or whatever they might be doing? And so really try to think analytically um, and kind of emotionally about what's driving these people. I had another really interesting conversation with my friend Mohammed from um, in Istanbul, Turkey, and he was Kurdish. And um, you know, just having a great conversation with him about, you know, the creation of a Kurdistan, for instance, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? And um, I sort of just supposed before we started the conversation that as a Kurd, he would want his own independent state, but actually he didn't. He thought that um, he had several sisters and mother, and he thought it would actually, he very much was in favor of the secular uh, Turkish state and thought a Kurdistan um, that would probably be ruled much more by Sharia law and things like that would actually be a detriment, especially to women, um, Kurdish women. And so he was thinking about his sisters and mothers and aunts. Um, and so to me, that was a prime example of here I came in sort of with a preconception of what I thought the people on the ground wanted, but actually as I got to know people and talked about it, and of course that's just his opinion, um, but still it gave me a much more sort of nuanced approach to how to view the world politically and to really understand what's going on both analytically and emotionally. Let's see, another question um, is about um, the book, uh, Sending Important Messages to Men and Women, but actually um, as a woman, or obviously as a solo woman traveling, um, do I have a message for women um, to take away from the book is the question. And I guess I do. I mean, I do want to encourage women to travel. I mean, a big part of my trip was pushing my own boundaries and going on this solo two-year trip as a woman. Many, many times I was the only Western woman um, taking local transportation, walking across borders. It was very, very hard travel. And um, to me, that was all sort of part of the adventure and part of what I wanted to do to push myself to extremes to really sort of transform my life and transform my experience there. So I guess my real message for women is don't be afraid to do solo travel, but be prepared. One of the things that I did before I went on the trip is I took a three-day, very intensive um, self-defense training uh, class from a group called Impact. And I know they have 11 chapters around the country and some internationally as well. So certainly check to see if they're on your college campus uh, or in an area nearby because it was excellent training. They taught women uh, basically how to fight to exhaustion and to really have situational awareness and to see what you can do if you get in a situation that uh, is dangerous. And so uh, for women, don't be afraid to travel alone. Really get out and enjoy it. I think that's how you get to know much more of the local community. You meet much more friends, other travelers, local or local people, etc. And yet be prepared prepared um, in terms of uh, taking care of your own safety. So be prepared before you leave and on the road. So many times, for instance, uh, I simply didn't go out at night. So at six o'clock at night, I became so neurala and I, you know, turned into a pumpkin and sort of went back home because um, it just wasn't safe for a woman. Um, when I didn't speak the language, I didn't know exactly where I was always um, to go out and roam the streets um, or even to you know, meet up with friends from the hostel or otherwise. And so um, just taking those precautions, I think it's, it's going to give you a much safer journey. Um, but don't hesitate and go for sure. Let me see. One of the other questions is about um, what's the most important advice I could give someone interested in traveling? Um, 
and in the world to help others less fortunate. I think the main piece of advice is to understand when you're there and you're volunteering and you're donating and giving back, you're the one who's actually receiving the biggest gift, right? We want to sort of lose this idea that we're sort of from a more developed country or from a Western country um, that's certainly wealthier and going and, and, and bringing solutions to problems that we probably don't really understand. And so we're there and we're there actually to have the experience to learn much more in depth about the community and culture and to really understand understand what's moving that society and so to be very very humble when you're there and, and to approach it as a student as you are now to learn about what you can do and certainly if you have skills or their technology skills or um, finance or you know design or whatever they might be medical skills certainly share those um, and share them in a way where you're teaching the local community how to carry on the work once you're gone and so you're making an investment in the community but first and foremost is really to think about you're not giving but you're giving so much you know you're getting so much back and so um, a great deal of humility I think and appreciation and to understand that you're there to give as a thank you for what you're getting this tremendous gift of understanding a culture on a very textured level and a very authentic experience is what you're getting uh, in return. Um, so that would be my biggest piece of advice. And the last question here is, um, where do you feel my next journey will take me? Uh, where do I see myself heading in life? work, philanthropy, and all that. Well, I mean, this is sort of my life work. Like, I don't, it's funny. Everybody's like, do you have a life plan? I'm like, not really, because it's, this is my life, you know. I'm traveling and writing about philanthropy. I'm very much interested in my work as a consultant, a philanthropic consultant, as somebody who writes about social causes and philanthropy, and obviously about encouraging people who travel to make room in their schedules to give back and to do volunteer work and to engage in philanthropy abroad. And so um, the book actually is part of a trilogy. And so um, I uh, just um, published, okay, so th this book is actually the middle book. The first book I wrote is the middle book. And then the book before it is Adventure Philanthropist, what I'm calling the early years. And, you know, before I even went on this adventure where I went to the 62 countries and all seven continents, I had actually traveled to more than 60 countries already. So um, I grew up abroad. I studied abroad in Cape Town and Beijing and in Hong Kong. And so I had a pretty good you know, travel life before. And so um, that book kind of talks about, basically as a prequel, um, why I left my career in corporate finance to go into philanthropy and how I incorporated travel into my life overall. Um, and then the third book in the series is actually called Adventure Philanthropist Coming Home. And that I'm actually writing and doing right now. So I think it's kind of very hypocritical to think that I'm going to go out and do all this volunteer work overseas when here at home in North America we have so many societal problems as well. Deep pockets of poverty and illiteracy and inequality. And so um, Coming Home is really about what we could do right here in our own backyard. And as I travel around um, last year and this year on the speaking tour, which I would love to get out there uh, to talk to you guys on the speaking tour. I do local volunteer events everywhere I go and um, have my host organizations um, nominate uh, a local nonprofit to actually receive 20% of the profit of the book sales so that I could continue to get back locally and, and even understand here in America and Canada and certainly Mexico where I'll be going about how to... Um, how we could how we could even side you know start to solve or really understand some of the bigger issues that are affecting um, our lives here in North America. Uh, so that's it. So I'll come back with the third uh, little trio of questions. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in a minute. Bye.